clothes. That's what we try to teach our people. Something as simple as wearing pants if you're a woman can get you killed. Right. Something as simple as wearing a dress as a man can get you killed. Right. No, I mean, Eric, you're literally killing your own people by wearing that. You're telling the young men it's okay to be a woman or be a feminine in a dress. Women, you're telling the younger women that it's okay to have a masculine spirit on you, that you wear the pants in the house, that you can run a man. Right. But we're trying to tell you in order to bring back the so-called black family, we must have a man and a woman unite. They must unite under marriage. There can't be two men, two women in a household. That doesn't exist according to God. Right. That's destruction according to God. Right. There has to be a man, a husband, and there has to be a woman, a wife. That's how you raise a family. That's how you raise a nation. Right. Read that last word again. Not the whole verse is just the last part of the I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Now give me second Timothy. Or oh, first Timothy 2 and 9. So we brought out the punishment if you don't wear the right attire. For my son, I know there's plenty of sisters over there, and there's some sisters over here. We're gonna bring out the attire that you should be wearing. We're going to bring out godly attire. We're going to show you how to be righteous, thus saith the Lord. Not how to be a baby mama. Not how to be a thought. Not how to be a busted down. We're going to show you how to be a righteous woman according to God. We are, we're not out here teaching how to twerk. We're not out here teaching how to run game, how to get a man to pay your bills. We're out here bringing a nation back. Read that. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh -huh. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. In what? Modest apparel. Women, there's nothing wrong with wearing a modest dress. Right. We had a sister tell us just what, Thursday? She said she wear pants because it make her butt look fat. She said, no, I, it makes my butt look fat. And y'all gonna look at my butt when I walk away. Believe it or not, sis, if, that all, if that's all you have to offer a man, then soon when the next butt comes by that looks better than yours, because well, there's always somebody better than you. Right. There's going to always be somebody taller than you, bigger than you, stronger than you, better looking than you. There's going to always be a woman with a better butt than you, a better figure than you. So if that's how you got your man because of your butt, guess what? He's going to leave you when Bring the next up. butt comes by that's better than yours. Right. Read. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel uh -huh. with shamefacedness. With what? Shamefacedness. She should have been ashamed to say, I wear this because it make my butt look fat. I got a fat. She should have been ashamed to say that before men. Before men, she should have been ashamed to say that. But she wasn't because she's destroyed. We're destroyed as a people. Read. And sobriety, uh -huh. not with braided hair or gold. Not with bread and hair or gold, it's sobriety. What is sobriety going to? That means having an even tempered mind, not being drunk, not being high. But clearly, she was destroyed in America. Clearly, she was destroyed here because she would have known I can't keep a man just with a fat butt. Right. I can't keep a man just with that. Right. I gotta know how to cook, I gotta know how to clean, I gotta know how to talk to this man if I'm gonna keep him. I gotta be a good woman, not a my butt look fat. Just look at my butt as I'm walking away. How can you keep a man just with that? Especially in today's society. That's right. Read. Or pearls or costly array. Keep going. But which becometh women professing godliness. Professing what? Godliness with good works. Godliness with good works. If she had understanding, or if she listened to my brother that was teaching, she would have learned how to profess godliness with good works. She went to interrupt it and just kept walking saying, look at my butt as I walk away. That wouldn't have been her speech, but because she's destroyed in America and all she know is, this is how I get a man. This is how I get somebody to pay my bills. This is how I get that car note paid. This is how I get them groceries in my refrigerator. I gotta make it clap. Right. I gotta twerk something. I gotta have something to catch these men's attention. But believe it or not, if you wanna catch a godly man's attention, you need to cover your tail up. Right. Read. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. With what? Good works. So now after you dress up properly, you have to do the things that's proper. Because you don't want to be like what they call it, the pastor's daughter. She known as the biggest freak in the church. Right. You don't want to have just an appearance of godliness, but you want to actually be godly. Right. You want to do the things, you want to have the works that show you're godly. 
So you want to look modest, you want to look clean, you want to look wholesome, and then you want to do the things. What good is wearing a dress if you if you in the back alley having sex with somebody for money? That's right. What good is it being proper if you ever saying anything out of your mouth? You sound like a nigga when you speak. You don't sound like a woman, you sound like a nigga. But that's in your spirit because you're destroyed. Read. Let the women learn in silence. Let them do what? Learn in silence with all subjection. <laughs> all praises. So in subjection, get the brothers some water. In subjection, in silence. Hey sisters, listen up. What we're bringing out is the truth. Sister, sister behind me in the dress. What we're bringing out, we ain't putting you on the spotlight. We just seen you over here listen to the word of God. So as your brothers, we just trying to give you salvation. Thus saith the Lord. We're trying to show you how can you get eternal life. Are you married, sis? Do you have a boyfriend? You don't? So in order, if, do you want a husband? Do you, nobody wants to be lonely, right? Nobody. We wasn't created to be lonely. Men wasn't created to be lonely, and women was specifically created for the man. So you look right now, believe it or not, sis, you actually exist for a man. For a very specific man, we may not know who he is right now, but believe it or not, the, since you're breathing air right now, you exist for one specific man. God created you. Give me that in uh, Genesis 3. God literally created you for a man. There will be no women on earth if there wasn't men. So that your very purpose is to find a husband and to do God's work. So first, in order for you to find that righteous husband, you have to learn the laws. And that's what we're about to teach you. You got what I want? Yes, sir. Bring it out. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman, he said, I will bring you multiply thy sorrow. And thy conception, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. So, sis, sis, you can look here. Sis, the scripture was saying your desire should be unto your husband. So we understand you said you are, you're not married and you don't have a boyfriend, right? But you don't want to be lonely for the rest of your life, correct? That's correct. Correct. So, the scripture said... So, we're going to show you, you have a purpose in life. Have somebody ever gave you a purpose or a reason to live? Your children, all praises, all praises. And that's uh, that's a lot, or that's a righteous thing to better yourself for your children, see? Because we all want to have, we all want our children to have a better life than us. Right. Most of us grew up rough, so we want to provide better. Right. Most of these men grew without a father figure, so guess what? They stopped whoremongering, got a wife, and they became that father figure for their children. Right. You understand that? Most of our, our mothers, hated their own children or taught their children wrong. So when these brothers picked their wife, they picked a righteous wife that can raise good children. Right? Yeah, go ahead, bring it. The book of Genesis chapter two and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. So it's not good that men should be alone, right? We're talking about Adam. God said this about Adam, but essentially about us as well. Read on. I will make him and help meet for him. He will make him a what? And help me for him. What's your name, sis? Kianda. Kianda. I'm Adriel. So the most I say he's going to make a help me for Adam. So that's literally what a woman is supposed to be, a help me. Do you understand what that is? No, no, no. A help me just means, do you ever ask your children to help you around the house? Help me out. Don't, don't put it all on my shoulders. Help me out. That way it can go a lot smoother, things can get done a lot faster, more efficiently. That's what a woman was created for, for a man, to be his helpmeet. Because believe it or not, Adam was ruling the whole world at that time. Dinosaurs, elephants, nations. He had to rule all that, so the most I gave him a helpmeet. That's what you need, something to give you peace, right? Read on. Verse 21, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh and stayed thereof. Okay, verse, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. So he said, It's not good that the man should be alone. And vice versa, it's not good that women should be alone. Because you gotta understand, women was created for men. So if there was no men, what would be the purpose of a woman? What would be her existence without a man? 
That's why it's a sin in today's society for same-sex marriage. Men sleeping with men. Right. Women sleeping with women. A woman wouldn't exist if it wasn't for a man. That's why I told you earlier, sis. Say your name one more time for me. Kianda. Okay, Kianda. So literally you exist for one specific man. You, you might not have met him yet, but you literally was created and you exist for one specific man to be a help me unto him, right? Uh, read on. Verse 21, I mean verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he woman and brought her unto the man. Made he what? Woman and brought her unto the man. And he brought her unto Adam. Now, let's see what Adam called Eve. Read. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This is now me. That's what he's saying. My wife, that's now me. That's right. Read. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So what does woman mean? Kiana, what does woman mean? Well, judge of my, well, my uh, definition yeah, definition. tell me yours and tell me the Bible. Well, because you always want to match up with the Bible. Right, okay, judge of your definition, it means it's a part of man, he's a part of, uh, a part, women are a part of men. Okay. So, one plus one, you know. Equals two. Yeah, this whole thing. Okay. Judge of what he just read. Right, now read the last part again. Uh, verse 24, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And then they shall be one flesh. So, that's... Now you see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.